G'day folks, welcome to an Oz Cyclone Chasers National Cyclone video update tonight, the 24th of November 2014. My name's Chris Nitzo, and this update is sponsored by Campbell Scientific Australia, when measurements matter. Rainfall totals till 9am today, most of them fell at least across the tropics in places that don't really have too many rain gauges, but overall you see that the central parts of the territory here copped a, a, a decent battering of thunderstorms, and also parts of southern inland Queensland and obviously northern New South Wales there copped a fair bit of thunderstorm activity as well. If we backtrack for the week and we can see the North Kimberley done very well over the week and so did South East Queensland and that was from some of those severe thunderstorms that hit Brisbane, the Sunshine Coast and to a lesser extent the Gold Coast. And places all the way even up to Rocky copped, uh, copped some thunderstorm activity from that trough system and that surface change that pushed up the coast. Unfortunately, if you live north of Rocky, uh, not good news. Uh, it didn't receive too much rain at all. Also, the other the other place that has received a lot of thunderstorm activity is the northwest parts of Queensland and the Gulf Country. Looking at the weather zone radar and lightning tracker, you can see here a lot of thunderstorm activity across Australia at the moment, particularly in a line here across the inland parts right through there. Now, what we're expecting is a pretty similar situation tomorrow occurring right in that same area. You can see, finally, the top end of the Territory copping its typical uh, build-up period here, uh, and it has been struggling up until today. Alrighty, before the rumour mill starts to get any uh, wild and crazy notions about this little low out here near the dateline being an, a Yasi repeat, uh, let me dispel that immediately. This little low here is going to track in a southerly direction and then southeasterly direction. It is under the influence of some fairly dry air to the south of it and eventually will be will come under the influence of a lot of vertical wind shear. So, folks, there is nothing that's going to happen with this particular low in terms of anything in the Australian area of responsibility. Look, it does still have potential to intensify slightly over the next day or two uh, as it tracks a little bit to the south. But after that, as I mentioned, this high pressure system here is pumping dry air into the region. We've also got this trough system through here that's going to uh, make sure that the system does not get itself together too much. And if I take you out to day six of the forecast period, you can see here it's uh, it's in the in the western hemisphere now, not in the eastern hemisphere. And fairly similar track here from the European, as you just saw with the GFS, and same track with the UK Met. If I draw your attention out west, however, there are a couple of tropical cyclones that could form in this region. So we've got the southwestern Indian Ocean here is getting quite active and will be quite active over the next week or so. And we've got one tropical low that we're watching now that, that at this stage has a high potential of developing into a TC. We've got another tropical low that will develop and push in a west-southwesterly direction almost on its coattails uh, after this, this current low that we're watching. This is the yellow one that we're watching now. Uh, and then in five days' time, we're expecting it to be fairly close to Madagascar. Uh, so it might be an interesting situation for them. But look, folks, for Australian, for the Australian region, we're not expecting anything to develop. Look, some guidance is tipping a very, very weak surface low to develop right along the Kimberley Coast. Now, that is surface-based only, and we shouldn't see any development vertically of that system, and so we don't expect it to intensify into anything more significant than just a, a heat low that just managed to make its way onto the coast or just over the uh, immediate ocean region next to the coast. So if we take a look at rainfall for up until tomorrow, we can see up until tomorrow morning a lot of that thunderstorm activity that we're already seeing. Now, if we fast forward to Tuesday and actually what, look at the rainfall expected tomorrow and into, uh, into tomorrow night, we can see a big increase in thunderstorm activity here over the northwest top end as this trough intensifies. Uh, and also a little bit over over the northeast New South Wales. Now on Wednesday we actually start to see the potential for some of that storm activity to make its way into southeast Queensland, and we see the trough system still lying in through inland Queensland. Unfortunately, not so much moisture here in this part of Queensland, the central western part of Queensland. So less chance of of thunderstorm activity producing much rain. Still a chance of storms, but those storms primarily fairly dry storms. Also something to note here over the Tuesday and Wednesday period, particularly on the Wednesday, uh, showers along the Queensland coast fairly frequent. And the other thing to note on Wednesday particularly, uh, and to a lesser extent Tuesday, but Wednesday particularly, is the extent of this thunderstorm activity from the North Kimberley 
all the way down into the inland Kimberley and Pilbara and then even into the Gascoyne and even further south, but we don't cover further south. But look, there's a new trough system that's forming right in that region. And so when we see uh, that trough system form, we're going to see fairly widespread shower and storm activity all through inland WA as well. On Thursday, you can see that activity continuing over inland WA, probably pushing slightly eastwards with the trough system. And once again, a fairly active period over southeast Queensland of showers and storms and extending further out here to the northwest. Once again, a little bit of a lack of moisture here, keeping rainfall totals fairly low. We'll see a decrease in activity over the top end of the territory on the Thursday. And then on the Friday, we have the trough system remaining over inland Queensland. Very active steer period of showers and storms across southern, uh, sorry, southeastern and central parts of Queensland as well in on the uh, Friday. And also a lot more activity around the Gulf Country on Friday as well. And you can see once again that activity over WA just edging ever so slightly further to the east, but still fairly widespread shower and storm activity all up and down WA's interior. We take a look from Friday to next Tuesday, and finally we really see a decent build-up period happening across northern Australia, at least across northwestern Australia, not so much the northeast. The northeast you can still see very low rainfall totals. Uh, once again, the southeast to central parts of the state uh, of Queensland are going to experience fairly, fairly widespread shower and storm activity. Also, the northwest part of Queensland expecting some excellent shower and storm activity in that period. So let's hope that that continues uh, because this part, of the, this part of Queensland has not received good rainfall for a long, long time. So 25 to 50 mils of rain in this part of the world in that four-day period on top of the potential shower and storm activity that could be uh, in the region over the next four days. Uh, you know, this is really good rainfall. Also, the interior parts of WA continuing to remain active and the North Kimberley as well. Uh, fantastic rainfall for them, finally. You can really see, even on the rainfall chart, the moisture streaming in from the northwest into the trough systems lying, uh, lying both here and across here. So you can see that moisture coming into the northwest and really smashing this region up here. Alrighty, folks, that's all we've got time for on the National Update. Remember, if you're a subscriber, check out your state updates tomorrow for more intricate details on where those showers and storms are going to be and what sort of rainfall totals you can expect from them, along with an interesting look at the long-term cyclone potential both in the Coral Sea and in the Indian Ocean. For details on how to subscribe, just go to our Oz Cyclone Chaser website, ozcyclonechaser.com.au, and click on the Subscribe to OCC. The cost is $34.95 a year, and it helps us get into more cyclones, and it helps you with better and much more in-depth information. Thanks for watching tonight, folks, and we'll talk again on Thursday.